this was a real good learning process for the for yesterday and today uh, i think we were focusing more on leadership from the top we were thinking that a leadership that will save the world a leadership that will save the nation so the concept is a leadership from the top saving the people at the bottom i would like to put it the other way around what is needed is in a country like india where we have 65% people still living in rural areas leadership from the bottom so how do we prepare leadership from the bottom so that they can solve their own problems rather than looking towards delhi to solve all the problems so this capacity at the bottom to solve problems rather than depending on people at the top i remember when gandhi was asked how are you how are you govern india when you become free at that point of time we were 700000 villages pakistan india together he said 700000 self governed self sufficient villages uniting into a nation called india that was the concept that people at the bottom will be strong and they will not be too dependent on the on the state and then the british journalist asked him that in order to do that can we help you then he said don't help me but get off my back the state is too heavy on people state is too heavy on people all the officials all the government so how do we free people from this heaviness and help them to take care of their own life help them to take care of their resources and their life and their culture so i think we need to invest a lot more time in understanding that how do we build leadership from the bottom so that we create a non dependent society why i say this because the economic globalization has brought a lot of problem for the people which they can't handle now they are not trained to handle it this has created a situation whereby large scale transfer of resources to from the poor people to the the powerful the land forest water in this globalization the resources are getting transferred from poor people to the rich hoping that they will process that those resources create job etc etc that may happen may not happen and who are the people losing the dalits the adivasis the fisher folks the nomads the women the small farmers these are the people who are losing so when people lose their livelihood resources land forest and water you know this is going to create a lot of conflict because one this is happening in many places it's like war like situation go to many many states of india it's like war like situation police army and people face to face and people don't know how to handle it now in many places it is happening without any preparation see when you move people from one to the other when you go from here to america you get trained how to live in america this is happening without preparation and young people should deal with this situation and that is why i think they need to know how to deal with the situation non violently because the situation can be very violent they should also know how to how not to get instrumentalized by violent groups there's a chance people are waiting on the other side with a gun to instrumentalize these people against the state so how to fight their struggle non violently and how not to get instrumentalized are very important so we need to have if we continue to have this globalization process if we continue to have transfer of resources and people are moving and out of this tension people start reacting 
we need to have lot more leadership capacities built at the bottom level. A good example will be Brazil. Brazil, 80% people are already moved into cities and slums. And 20% people controlling the entire land mass, which is two and a half times bigger than India. So is that the right model of development? So that question need to be asked. Even if that is the right model of development, we need to have preparation for young people to deal with the situation without getting into violence. This morning we were discussing about the disconnection between leadership and people. I think this disconnection is also because of the educational system that came up in today's discussion. It's an interesting study. Mr. Kapoor from the University of Pennsylvania gave an interview recently in Times of India, you must have read it. He said, the kind of institutions that we have created, justice can never be provided to people. It's not the, the problem of the institution, because the kind of people who have occupied these institutions, be it a block development office, be it a thana, be it a revenue office, any office, because people get into these institutions through various means, through corrupt methods, shortcuts, expecting this institution to deliver justice is impossible, he says, because it, is, it has turned out to be a corrupt system. So an unjust system will produce a lot of conflict and violence at the bottom. Because the institutions cannot provide justice, an unjust system will produce conflict. So let us understand, this is time for us to work with the young people at the bottom level and create that kind of leadership that can non-violently transform this, this conflict. And I think on, on leadership, Gandhi has a point. Leadership at the top, not for the bottom, or even at the bottom. Gandhi says, when you contemplate an action, think of the poorest and weakest person in your, that you have seen in your life. Even Venkai Nayaduji mentioned about it today. See, when you plan a program, where is your focus? The poorest and weakest in the society, your programs and policies will empower the poorest and weakest, or this will benefit the powerful. If we can keep this talisman in mind, a lot of the problems that we are facing today at the grassroots level can be solved. The conflict and violence can be solved if we focus on the poorest and weakest when we create policies and programs. Gandhi also said, there is enough for everyone's need and not enough for anybody's greed. Are we into a greed-based development model? One percentage of globe population controlling 58 percentage of world's wealth? Is that the model that we want to promote? Or if there is a need-based model, which, you, which we call the Sarvodaya model, well-being of all, can we promote a different model that will provide justice and resources and opportunities to everyone? And the third thing Gandhi said to us, means are as important as ends. Now, we justify ends, but we forget about means. Everything economically correct need not be ethically correct. So ethics should also be part of our debate in, 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 in our debate regarding the development model. And I think if we keep these three things, Gandhi said, the ethics uh, and the focus on the poorest and greed and need, if we can keep this in focus, I think much of the development programs and policies we announce from the top can be received by the people and that can create more happiness and harmony. See, in India, India definitely gave a different, develop, uh, uh, different leadership model to the world, the enlightened leadership. And I, that is what we learned from Buddha, Gandhi, Vinoba, Jayaprakash, enlightened leadership. And what is this enlightened leadership? I think this is based on renunciation and sacrifice. This is not based on accumulation of wealth and power. The capacity to renounce, the capacity to sacrifice. I remember the, the biography of Chester Bowles. Chester Bowles was an American ambassador in India. In his biography, he says, America and India are very different. 
it, it behaves very differently. And what did he say? He said in America, when a person moves from hut to Manhattan, he becomes great. But in India, when someone moves from Manhattan to hut, he becomes great. So he says that is what he learned from Buddha's life, Mahavir's life, Gandhi's life. And he, these thoughts came to you, they came to him when he was standing in front of the, the hut of Mahatma Gandhi, he says. So this idea of a leadership, not based on accumulation of power and wealth, but based on the moral leadership, based on renouncing and sacrificing. I will end with my last point, that the world is in crisis. And this is where the issue of global leadership comes. World is in crisis. World is in crisis because there is so much war and violence, and people really don't know what to do. For many years, people in Europe thought this is in that part of the world, and we have nothing to worry. But now the bomb is blasting in Paris, in Brussels, and in London. So they know violence is also here. They don't know how to handle it. So world is in crisis in terms of growing level of violence. World is also in crisis because of climate change and global warming. The planet is in crisis, the planetary crisis. So this is a time the world is looking towards India. Wherever I go, this is what I find, that world is looking towards India for leadership. Not leadership in computer technology, not leadership in terms of exporting minerals, leadership in building a peaceful world. Can India provide the capacity to people to behave non-violently, to non-violently not only between human being and human being, but human beings and nature. The, the non-violence is a way of life. Can we help people to learn that? Can we also help state to be more non-violent? Because even if people are non-violent, state is bent upon using violence to put down all voices of dissent. Even we have come to a situation where even state need to transform. It's not only people who need to transform from violence to non-violence. Even state need to transform from a be violent behavior to a non-violent behavior. Model itself as a non-violent instrument. So this is a time for us to take this challenge of providing leadership to the world. I was recently in Georgia. I will end with that. Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, you know this Caucasian region. You know, people told me in many meetings, look, we had enough of Russia. We had enough of America. We now have enough of European Union. But this is not going to solve our problem because this is all material world. We want the moral, spiritual strength of India to solve all our problems in the Caucasian region. That is what they said. So the expectations are very high. The idea will be, can we build this, this beautiful idea of nonviolence from bottom to the top. See, this is cross-cutting from bottom to spinning it at every level and provide the world a kind of a leadership. That is our heritage. From that heritage, provide a leadership that will make the world a much better place. Thank you very much.